T238 sent me their latest FCU for HPA engines, and they call it the Meteor OLED FCU. This FCU is completely compatible with the Polar Star F1 and F2 engines, and the latter is what I'll be testing with today with the stock Polar Star V2 trigger board. There's no need to worry about wiring diagrams or if things fit, as the Meteor FCU uses the same wiring pattern and connectors as the Polar Star engine. T238 also claims compatibility with Blackleaf Speed Gen 2 trigger boards, which support Wolverine engines, but I can't test or check those claims, so I won't be discussing that any further. If you don't know, FCU stands for Fire Control Unit. Basically, this is the brains and control board behind all the settings of your HPA engine. In the very nicely designed box, you get a printed manual. You also get a really nice patch. Love this thing. Maybe it's the orange color, but the design is pretty cool. You get both a 3-pin and 5-pin JST ZH connector with open-ended wiring on the opposite side. Finally, you get the Meteor OLED FCU. The board supports JST battery connector and JST ZH 5-pin for trigger board. The 3-pin cable and port is for an integrated magazine power supply interface. Man, I have to say right off the bat, this FCU feels really high quality and built solid. While I struggled to put the box away and clean up my desk in the background, let's touch on some key features and compare the Meteor FCU to the stock Polestar FCU. So there's a ton of features to talk about, and I'm going to leave this comparison up for a little bit so that you can digest everything. In this section of the video, I'll only glimpse over the settings in general, and we'll get into more details on some things later. This FCU has some perks, but one thing I think is the biggest perk over the standard Polestar FCU is the large multi-line OLED screen, which allows a very clear, easy, and direct way to adjust your FCU settings. This screen is twice the size of the Polestar FCU. The T238 FCU cost is also very competitive, and it's regularly 8259 USD, but on sale for 6880 USD at the time of writing. This is in contrast to the stock Polar Star FCU, costing 81 USD, regular price. Now you do get an FCU in the box with the new engine, but there are many reasons why you might need a new one, if not only for upgrading. Both FCUs support open and closed bolt engines, such as the F1 and F2. Both FCUs can also control all necessary functional settings for the solenoids and nozzle, including pop it dwell, nozzle dwell, and nozzle delay. The T238 meter actually includes an additional poppet delay setting, which we'll discuss a bit more later on. One thing I noticed is currently the T238's poppet dwell is in milliseconds, while Polar Star's is in tenths of a millisecond, ultimately giving the Polar Star more tunability for air volume. I've already provided this feedback to T238 for consideration. Both FCUs also support anti stiction timeout, and pulse settings. By the way, if you don't know any of these terms, we'll go over some more of the settings in detail later. The bonus of the T238 FCU is the power support, which goes up to an 11.1 volt LiPo battery. This means that you're sure to already have something that works. FCUs don't really need big batteries or higher voltages, but now you can stop asking if 11.1 volt batteries will fry it, because in the T238 case, it won't. There's also an auto shutdown timer to avoid killing your battery if you leave it plugged in too long. There's also low battery voltage protection. The T238 FCU has lots of firing modes, including semi, full auto, 2 to 9 round burst, binary, sniper delay, and what they call ramp mode. There are some additional features for gel rifles, but we won't get too much into that. In general, the T238 FCU has more firing features and tunable settings to better control your rifle. Another cool feature of the Meteor FCU is the ability to save three engine profiles and seamlessly switch between them if you need to. The T238 Meteor has a magazine count simulation, which is something missing from the Polestar FCU. One interesting difference between the FCUs is the full auto fire rate. The T238 FCU will actually calculate the expected fire rate, which is ultimately based on all the internal solenoid and delay settings. Well, Polar Star FCU differs here by allowing you to enter a desired maximum fire rate or a cap, but it doesn't necessarily mean the inputted settings will be able to provide that fire rate. The T230 FCU has some cool power and screw settings, including auto off, FCU runtime displayed, brightness settings, auto shutdown, which can really save your battery. The FCU home screen will also tell you the battery's voltage and cell count in case you're worried about low voltage. The T238 FCU has a page to show if the trigger and selector and magazine are detected, which helps you test installation of new components. Neither FCU has Bluetooth functionality or a phone app, which is a bit of a downside for something like this, but understandably that'll add to the cost. The T238 Meteor size is 9mm thick by 24 by 61 long, which is quite comparable to the Polar Star stock FCU being 58mm long, 23mm wide, and 7mm thick. So despite the additional PCB board on the T238 FCU and its bigger screen, it's practically the same size and will still fit very nicely in the stock of most rifles. With such a nice OLED screen to show off, we can dive into the FCU settings one by one. Just a single press to turn the FCU on. As it turns on, you get a preview of what you're set to and what FCU profile is selected. Immediately, you can see your shot counter in the middle. The top left displays the current FCU on time. Top right shows the battery cell count and voltage. Bottom right shows your selector setting and rounds per second expected in full auto. The bottom left confirms the FCU profile again. 
as you fire, there are other things that may pop up on screen too, such as information on which fire mode you just fired in. Single click again brings you into the main menu. You can jump right into the FCU setup, but I hit the power options first. We also have record and sensor settings to check out later. When you enter the power options, you can confirm display auto off time, which can happen either immediately with the ABT setting or after a set time delay, which can go up to 30 seconds. The brightness can go from 1 to 5, and man, this thing's pretty bright. Auto shutdown time can be 30 or 60 minutes. Battery UVP is really low voltage protection setting, which is best to leave on, and will cut the FCU out if your battery cells go below 3.2 volts per cell. Each page of the FCU settings have a convenient reset button as well, that'll reset only those settings on that page. Next, I'll go into the FCU setup page for the main FCU settings. First option is to choose what FCU profile you want to edit. Then you make your engine type confirmation, game mode, or selector settings. Finally, the performance page is where all the real settings are stored. Under the engine type, you can select single or double solenoid, like the Polestar F1 or F2 engines respectively. For the bolt mode, you can choose close bolt mode on or off, which is basically close bolt or open bolt mode. Your selector can be set to semi or full auto, which is your standard arrangement, or you can reverse it to full auto and semi. There's more on this later. Auto loading is just for gel blasters, so keep that off. Under the game mode page, we can now control what the previous semi and full auto selection did. Basically think of this as what your first selection position does versus what your second selector position does. The semi setting can be true semi, binary, or two to nine round burst. The full auto setting can be set to true full auto or two to nine round burst. Ramp mode is also called paintball mode sometimes in their marketing. It's a special setting that will automatically swap you to full auto from semi-auto if you're spamming the trigger really fast. The last setting is sniper delay setting, which is a mandatory time delay between each trigger pull, which can range from 0.5 to 3 seconds. If this is turned on, then both your semi and full auto fire modes will be limited to semi-auto fire governed by the time set here. Finally, we have the meat and potatoes FCU performance settings. With this FCU, you can set the main poppet and nozzle timings differently in semi-auto fire mode and in the full auto fire mode, which adds an extra layer of tuning capabilities. The friction tab is for anti-stiction settings, and then there's also a BB limit tab which is for mag capacity simulation. The semi-settings page includes the four main timings and settings which are poppet dwell, poppet delay, nozzle dwell, and nozzle delay. All of these settings will be available if you've selected the dual solenoid engine, and if you have only the single solenoid engine checked off, you'll just see poppet dwell and poppet delay since the single solenoid engines don't control the nozzle electronically. To really get full value out of your FCU, you need to understand a bit how the engine works, more specifically the solenoids and have an appreciation for the cycle steps and timing. In the full auto settings screen, you get the exact same timing and delay settings and can choose them differently than your semi-auto. And the fun part about this page is the FCU will calculate and display the expected rate of fire in rounds per second on the bottom right. The Polestar FCU will let you set a max cap rounds per second instead, which you may not even be able to get to given the actual timing settings. Over to the friction page, you can set an anti-stiction value. This is basically a one-time boost in the poppet dwell timing to allow more air to pass through once the solenoid is activated. The reason you might do this is if the rifle's been sitting dormant for a while or in the cold and you notice your first shot's not very consistent. Boosting the dwell on the first shot using the anti-stiction setting will allow that consistency to become a bit more normal. Time delay for the poppet dwell boost is also set by the timer here. The BB limit page is pretty straightforward. If you want to simulate a mag round limit, turn this mode on and set the mag limit you want. After you fire the given amount of rounds that you've set, your gun won't let you fire for a predetermined timing to simulate a mag change. That wait time for this FCU is going to be the default 2 seconds. Going back to the main page under record, you can find FCU runtime and a shot counter, which are more or less already displayed on the FCU home screen when you first turn on the FCU. The last page to cover is a sensor page, which lets you have a visual cue if your trigger is detected, if your selector is activated in the full auto position, and if your magazine is connected properly for auto loading magazines. These sensors will only work when you actually have it connected to a rifle. Now it's time for some fun stuff and actually test the FCU out on the rifle. I'm trying to attempt to set it up for my HPA Polestar F2 engine. If you don't already have your rifle wired up, or if you need to match wires differently than the FCU board wiring diagram, then you can use the wiring harness they provide you. T238 also provides a detailed wiring diagram in their manual. For Polestar trigger units and engines, this should just be plug and play. You can see that the FCU fits nicely into the buffer tube of a typical rifle. You should have no problem closing your stock all the way if you desire to. When you start the FCU, you can go to the sensor page and double check that your trigger and selector are being detected properly by the FCU. The box will light up when the sensor is picked up. Next, go into setup for FCU1 or whatever number FCU you want to initiate with. Quickly checking the setting, I want to make sure I'm in double engine mode given my F2 engine. I can also check off open or close bolt mode, which is up to you and your preference. Finally, we get on to the real good stuff, which is tuning the performance settings for this FCU. Buckle up as this is a little bit of a long part, but hopefully educational. I'll start by showing you guys my current FCU settings for my Polarstar V2 and Polarstar FCU. Largely, they are the default or minimum recommended by Polarstar, except for the tune Papa Dwell which I've demonstrated the full process of in a separate video that's related to the Polarstar FCU. 
Puppet dwell is the most important setting, which indicates how many milliseconds the solenoid will remain active to let air out. If you are familiar with voluming an AEG cylinder and barrel, the settings basically the same thing. Puppet dwell is highly dependent on your build, so it's very important to set it up correctly and not just take someone else's values. If you change other components of your rifle, like your barrel, hop-up bucking, or even the BB weight, I'd recommend rechecking your puppet dwell setting so there'll be a new ideal value. One thing that I don't like as much on the T238 FCU is that the setting for Papa Dwell is in milliseconds, while Polar Stars is in tenths of a millisecond. That means that Polar Star FCUs can fine tune their airflow just a little bit more. Tuning airflow is important for efficiency and accuracy. As you'll see later, this is why the T238 engine Papa Dwell is set so much lower than the Polar Star engine as it's on a completely different basis. Comparing these FCUs for Papa Dwell setting is also far more confusing than you think. Polar Star engine's default value of zero for Papa Dwell is actually around 40 tenths of a millisecond delay, or four milliseconds. And the increment setting you choose thereafter is based on adding to that by tenths of a millisecond. So a setting like 45, showing on my Polar Star FCU, is actually closer to say 40 plus 45 or 85 tenths of a millisecond, which is eight and a half milliseconds and that's comparing to the T238 FCU that sets their Papa Dwell simply based on milliseconds. Using the tenth of a millisecond tuning I think would be better for T238, so I've sent them that feedback. T238 FCU also only lets you go down to as low as 4 milliseconds or 40 tenths of a millisecond, which is pretty close to the default setting from the Polar Star FCU. In short, just be careful not to assume your Polar Star FCU Papa Dwell can be easily transferred over and you should 100% redo your Papa Dwell setup. I've demonstrated this full process before for Papa Dwell setting, but it's a worthwhile subject, so I'll go over it again specifically with the T238 FCU. First step is get a chrono. For this setup, make sure you're using the BB-8 that you plan to use in game. Make sure your Papa Dwell setting to start is set arbitrarily high. For the T238 FCU, you can consider something like 15 pretty high. The reasoning being is that the higher the air, the more you're overvoluming your rifle. At some point, your rifle will hit a ceiling for any given tank pressure. This is basically forced when you overvolume your rifle. Your first main step is to chrono, and then set your tank pressure down until you get your desired drill limit. With your poppet dwell set arbitrarily high, and your tank pressure set to what you want, you're essentially setting the ceiling of your FPS or joules. Now comes a bit of trial and error. You want to reduce your poppet dwell setting in small increments, which would be about 1 millisecond for T238's FCU, or by about 5 or 10 tenths of a millisecond on the Polar Star. I like to chrono 10 shots in each increment and then record those 10 results in Excel. Do yourself a favor and graph those results in Microsoft Excel or take a look at the numbers on paper. At some point you'll start to notice an obvious drop in the joules as you'll start chronoing lower and lower. If you graph this in Excel, you'll see the curve and you'll see the consistency in FPS between your group of 10 shots changing as you go between your dwell settings. If you plot the graph, you can easily see the point of optimum error as the peak of the curve where your FPS flatlines. This point should also be chosen to give you the best consistency between your maximum and minimum FPS within the group of all 10 shots. If you're doing this without graphing your results, then you can just look at the numbers you have, you start to notice them declining, and then you set your dwell and increment or two back up until the joule limit it stabilizes again. Then you should be pretty close to that ideal value. But trust me, graphing it out is a lot easier to figure out the right optimum points. A super high DP will give consistency in FPS, but will be wasting lots of air as it's overvoluming your barrel. This may also lead to lower accuracy due to overvoluming too low of a pop it dwell and you won't reach the desired joule limit that your tank's capable of at the set pressure that you've got, simply because the engine isn't letting out air long enough. Accuracy and shot consistency and FPS will also be terrible, and if you're on the extreme end of too low, your shots won't be making the range that you expect. Moving on to poppet delay, this is the time in milliseconds that the poppet will, will remain deactivated or closed. Basically, this can help you tune your rate of fire with a low value, which is useful for having higher rate of fire builds or reactivity, but often at the expense of precision. T238 suggests never to set this less than 4 milliseconds, which is actually limited in their FCU. Just note that Polar Star's FCU doesn't even have this setting as a user adjustable setting, so this is sort of an additional layer and added customization for the T238 FCU. Next setting is Nozzle Dwell, which is another fundamental value expressed in milliseconds. It indicates the time required to load the BB into the hop-up chamber. This setting tells the rifle how long to leave the nozzle retracted so a BB can feed in. If you're experiencing feeding issues, then you can increase this value by 1 until it goes away. For Polar Star engines, the nozzle dwell for most builds is recommended between 8 milliseconds to 14 milliseconds. If it's not long enough, then you'll find your gun won't feed. Decreasing the nozzle dwell will increase your rate of fire, but could cause yourself feeding problems, so it's a bit of a fine balance for speed builds. Nozzle delay on this FCU, or otherwise known as DR in Polar Star's manual, is listed as a minimum value at 11.5 milliseconds for Polar Star engines. This is the time required for the system to reset itself, which they account for as 9 milliseconds of the nozzle moving, and then 2.5 milliseconds of the solenoid de-energizing. Polar Star actually rec recommends that the setting is 22 milliseconds to be conservative, which is their default setting when they ship you the FCU, but in no case they recommend less than 17 milliseconds. If nozzle delay is set too low, then just like an old bolt system, the air is going to start going down the barrel before nozzle has fully closed, because 
exposing an air leak, which can screw up shock consistency and cause other issues. Increasing the value will alleviate these issues, but it'll also slow down your rate of fire. Now that we've gone through all the critical timing settings, one of the other questions people ask are, should you use open or closed bolt for something like an F2 engine? It's actually a trick. The nozzle is always in closed bolt mode position because it's set by a spring for the F2 engine. So the nozzle is always forward or closed no matter what to start. The difference in the FCU setting really means how the full firing cycle behaves or whether the cycle starts with nozzle activation or the pop it and airflow activation. In terms of nozzle position, the F1 is an open bolt, F2 is a closed bolt. In terms of firing options, the F1 engine is open bolt and the F2 can do both open and closed bolt firing. For closed bolt firing action, poppet solenoid activates, opening the poppet and sending air down the barrel. The timing associated with this is the poppet dwell or DP setting. After that cycle, the poppet solenoid closes and the air stops going down the barrel. Then there's a delay timing between this step and the next step, which is the poppet delay that T238 has as added functionality. The next step is that the nozzle solenoid opens again, the nozzle starts moving backwards, and at the rear of the travel, a BB pops up from the mag. The timing for this action is set by the nozzle dwell. After this step, the nozzle solenoid closes and the nozzle returns forward under spring pressure, chambering the BB. And then you have your nozzle delay setting, which will cycle back from this last step to the first step, which was allowing air to go through the barrel and sending the BB down. And this is timed by the nozzle delay setting. Close bolt mode, the chamber is empty to start. And as you fit a magazine, then your first shot fired will be a dud. This is because there's no BB in the chamber. Likewise, if you pull your mag out, you can actually still fire one more round because there will be one left in the chamber. Closed bolt will allow first round accuracy to be a bit better. In the open bolt mold firing cycle, the nozzle solenoid opens up, the nozzle starts moving backwards, and at the rear of its cycle, the BB pops up from the mag. From here, you have your nozzle dwell timing that's between this step and the next. In the next step, the nozzle solenoid closes and the nozzle returns forward under spring pressure, chambering the BB. In the next step, the poppet solenoid activates, opening up the poppet, sends air and the BB down the barrel. And this is timed by the poppet dwell. Then the poppet solenoid closes, air stops going down the barrel, and the gun's at rest. Well, that's pretty much all I have for you guys. I probably gave you more than you came in bargained for, especially more than the T238 Meteor review. But I've shown this FCU does what it says it does, and it got a lot of perks and features for a competitive price against the stock FCU. So you may want to check it out if you're in the market for a new FCU.